Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. Machine learning is an application of AI, artificial intelligence, that provides systems the ability to automatically learn and improve from experience without being explicitly programmed. So when I say improve from experience, this experience is different from the experience that humans encounter. This experience is mostly in the form of historical data. Okay, so if we, if we encounter a particular thing, if you're noting it down, and that actually becomes a kind of log, which you can actually feed it to your machine in a particular format or in a particular language which it could understand. And if it is able to do that, you, that particular machine would be able to experience the, uh, say, learnings that you had fixed. Okay, so with that, it can actually work out a few things as well. So that's what exactly is the essence of machine learning. This is one of the most widespread techniques, I would say, which is actually prevalent, and this is actually used across industry. And uh, speaking about machine learning, there are different techniques available inside machine learning. And uh, if, if you have to understand this a bit more technically, when I speak about machine learning, it's specifically certain statistical techniques Okay, which you would be applying using a particular tool or programming language in a particular business domain. In your case, the business domain is fixed, and I believe that's automotive. So what happens is, to give you a very simple example, let's say you have a uh, you have a case of linear regression, and uh, wherein you are trying to understand what are the important factors which goes behind the sales of Hyundai cars in a particular segment. Okay. You, you, you would necessarily would have to have the data collected at some point in time, the customer behavior data. It could be a combination of demographic data of the customer, financial data of the customer, and the buying behavior data of the customer. So these three aspects combine to form a particular data based on which each and every row in your data set would represent whether, the, whether a particular customer is actually buying the car from your let's say, a uh, set of offerings that you have in your product segment, and uh, he is not. So in case he is not, that essentially means that he is buying a car from your competitor, okay? So that, that's what we are actually looking for when you speak about a data set. And whenever you're applying certain statistical techniques in that particular data set in order to derive, to, in order to derive that particular conclusion, okay? The conclusion is something like that, where if I have a set of attributes, whether I'll be able to predict whether the particular person is going to buy my car or not, okay? So that's the kind of prediction which you'll be doing in which you'll specifically be using techniques of machine learning, okay? And how do you be building that thing? So when it comes to implementation, what is it that you're doing? You know the business problem, you have the data, you know what you want to achieve, but how do you do that? In order to do that, you essentially have to either code out something, there are n number of ways in which you can do that. There is option like drag and drop, in which you can drag and drop the parameters and build your model. There are options in which you can also code it out, okay? Specifically in the area of IT, we usually prefer to code these things out because there could be certain customizations which we might trigger, which may not be possible in that particular platform or the tool that we're using, okay? But to give you a very simple example, if you're trying to use Tableau, or in case you're using trying to use Microsoft Azure, both of these things have a very good drop and a drop and a drop, sorry, drag and a drop interface, using which you would be able to build a satisfactory amount of, say, model, using which you'll be able to predict the event. Okay, so that is what is the essence of machine learning. Okay, now let me move on to the next slide that I have. This could be a bit technical. Okay, so please be there with me. I'll, I'll try to make it as relevant as it is possible for you guys, okay? Now, this slide strictly speaks about the different types of techniques that you have inside machine learning techniques, okay? I have already provided an example of supervised, exa supervised learning technique just now, wherein you'll try to predict whether a particular customer is going to buy a particular car or not, okay? That could be a particular example of supervised technique. An unsupervised technique could be something like that. You have the a combination of uh, demographic, financial, and buying behavior of your data, and you want to understand which particular set of customers buys which segment of your car, okay? 
I, I, I believe you guys are having cars at different segments targeted at different income group, right? You're having something in the range of say 10 to 12 lakhs, something in the range of five to seven, something below five, okay? So accordingly, you might have uh, classified certain uh, customer groups as well. So accordingly, so how, how would you know which particular set of customers belongs to which group? So if I have, let's say, a particular observation, which denotes the entries for a particular customer to which category it will actually belong. How would that help you? Okay, let me tell you that. Once you identify to which particular cluster or category that particular customer belongs with the help of supervised learning, you would be able to curate your offerings to that particular customer. So kind of customized offerings you would be able to deliver because you already know what could be the possible range of expenditure that that particular customer could possibly need or the buying preference that that customer would have. And almost all the people in, in, in those categories, okay, so let's say you have the overall database of your customer and you are classifying your customer into three distinct segments, okay, uh, someone who is actually high end customer, someone who is in the middle income group customer and someone who is uh, below that middle income group customer and this clustering is something which you are doing based on the buying preference that this customer has with respect to the automotive vehicle which it has purchased in the last five years okay so if you are strictly able to identify your set of customers you can actually focus your business in that area you'll be you'll be better positioned to have uh, your team working on a set of customers with a, a prior background of that customer known to you. You would be able to deliver better offerings, customized offering to that particular customer. And chances are much higher that you would end up converting a business into sales. Okay, that's what we call it as a unsupervised study. Now, if I have to explain you the difference technically, when I say supervised learning, we have a particular event and we have a particular response to that event, okay? The event could be whether a particular person is buying a car or not, and the response is either yes or no. So when you have a data in that format, we call that data as a supervised data or labeled data. Now, the other thing is unsupervised data or unlabeled data. In unsupervised data, you do not have that response, okay? You will know whether a particular, oh, sorry, you will know the factors which will lead to a particular per customer buying a car, but you do not know whether that particular customer finally buys that car or not. Okay, in, in the area of statistics in the, in the field of machine learning, it takes a lot of time to create such data sets. So usually in your real life data, you'll find most of the data belonging to unsupervised, uh, unsupervised category. You need effort, you need time to convert unsupervised data into supervised data, which is essentially your historical data, okay? Now, the third category is reinforcement learning. When I speak about reinforcement learning, it is basically what you will learn from your environment, okay? To, to give you an analogy for this, all of you must have noticed at some point in time, a particular toddler who is actually trying to adjust himself or herself in this particular world, okay? To give you a particular example, during the very first days of his life in this particular, uh, in, in Earth, let's say he, 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 he or she daily sees a particular, uh, observes a particular cup, okay? Let's say a cup from which smoke or steam is arising out, okay? What might happen is initially that particular child or the toddler might like to touch that thing because he doesn't know what that is. Out of curiosity, he might, he might touch that. Immediately, he'll be getting a heating sensation, the result of which will be he'll be drawing his hand behind. Since the mem they have a very short memory initially, he might like to repeat that thing, let's say, many number of times. To a certain point, you would be doing that. At certain level, you will understand that if he touches something from which steam-like thing is arriving, he is going to get a heating sensation. Once that realization comes to that toddler, he will stop or he will be apprehensive when he will be touching things like that. 
Okay, that's exactly the concept of reinforcement learning. Learning from your environment, along with which you are having something called as a reward or punishment. When you're touching that cup, you get a heating sensation, which is basically a punishment. If you're not touching that, you're not getting that heating sensation, which is basically a kind of reward you can say. So algorithms in this particular area are built in that particular fashion. Okay, this is just an overview, not a technical concept. Certain examples of reinforcement learning, Google car, so, sorry, self-driving cars, okay, these are some of the best examples that we have. Okay, now, we have another set of classification, sorry, another set of distribution of supervised learning. We have regression-based supervised learning and classification-based regression, sorry, classification-based supervised learning. Now this is purely based on the response variable. I mentioned there is something called as a particular event and against that there is a response. Okay? So depending on the response variable, if you are having a continuous response variable, you would ideally end up applying regression techniques. And if you're having a discrete response variable, let's say yes or no, you will end up applying classification techniques. Okay? So that's, this is all about your machine learning algorithm. Okay? Uh, what are the different types of machine learning algorithm that we have? There are a lot of things which I can actually go on speaking about this algorithm. Okay? And this will actually never end actually. Okay? And there is another branch which is a kind of extension of machine learning algorithm which we call it as a deep learning algorithm. Okay? Which gives us a set of different architecture. So that is also something that we have, but I'm not going to speak about that. So let's try to understand certain use cases of uh, machine learning algorithm. What are certain instances where you can actually use this kind of machine learning algorithm? Okay. Uh, one simple case could be a quality control. Okay. It could be like you, you you can try to understand whether 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 certain parameters of a particular product are actually reaching to a particular category. Okay. So essentially, when you are actually doing quality control, you have certain measures. Okay. To you have certain parameters that you would like to measure, and there is a particular threshold based on which you will see whether a particular product is meeting that quality or not. Okay, so you can actually perform this particular exercise using machine learning as well. Okay, so you can automatically build a particular algorithm and identify whether certain uh, certain products are meeting that particular criteria or not. Now, this is from the product point of view. There could be certain things from the customer point of view as well, like predictive maintenance. Let's say you are having a particular automotive, or you have a you, you own a particular vehicle, okay? And you know it's not that new. It has been some time, that's three and a half, three and a half to four years of time. You all you are also apprehensive that if you're taking a long drive, it might break down somewhere. And so, and that, that could be one of the reasons you are a bit apprehensive about a long drive, okay? But at that point in time, just try to imagine if your dealer comes up to you and tells you that since you have driven this much this much of kilometers and since uh, the machine so, so, sorry since the, since some of the parameters of the car that we have actually measured is is we believe that that is actually going out of certain range we believe that you your car has a very high chance or high probability of breakdown in, in, in let's say XYZ area, let's say in, in, in the area of drive train, okay? So if you, if you would actually want to go for some kind of, uh, say, uh, repair, some kind of replacement of your parts, that will actually ensure that all the other parts also are intact, and this will also ensure that the car is having long time. So this is some kind of input that you, like as, a, as an automotive dealer or as an automotive company, you can reach out to your customer. Obviously, you'll be requiring a lot of data for that. You need to monitor your, uh, say, customer's behavior, the car's data, and all the other parameters that you want to monitor. But the point that I'm trying to drive is, this is something which could actually be done, and this is something which is actually being done. Okay, there are uh, like uh, there are companies in the e even in the Indian uh, automotive industry who are actually following such things. Okay, then you have something in the area of inventory prediction. How do you know? Which let's say you, you have your tie ups with your OEMs. Okay? You have your tier one, OT, tier one, tier two, tier three OEMs. So, how do you know which particular uh, say, item in your inventory is going to uh, 
uh, go going to get exhausted and accordingly uh, if, if, if a particular item is not available the wait time for selling a particular kite uh, for selling a particular kite car might increase which might which might ultimately affect the customer experience okay, in, in a not so positive way so you might like to understand how you can predict to maintain an optimum level of inventory with respect to the OEM suppliers that you have. You can do that using time series analysis, which is another part for your machine learning algorithms. Okay. Then you have something called a vehicle diagnostic, which is very which is very much related to predict maintenance. Vehicle diagnosis, sorry, vehicle diagnostics could be uh, understood in two different manner. One is something that is related to predictive maintenance, and one is simply giving an kind of dashboard kind of view to your customer which will actually help him monitor the progress or the quality of the components of the car okay let's say it could be something related to the internal mechanics of the car it could be something related to the uh, embedded uh, features of the car like the electronic component of the car the music system of the car or uh, it could be something related to the cooling level of the car or it could be something related to the petrol consumption of the car as well. okay so these are some of the things which you can do and coming back to the last point we have something in the area of dealer sentiment index so it's it's in the area of dealers so if you are handling your dealers as well so let's say uh, you are dealing with a lot of dealers and there has been certain issues which has been going okay and if you want to understand whether that particular dealer is some someone who, who would actually like to part away with this particular say automotive is something that you can also understand by analyzing sentiments okay sentiments in the sense that whatever discussions you guys are having or whatever things you are exchanging if you are somehow able to say record a particular thing and you are able to convert those things into a particular algorithm there are a number of algorithms which will actually tell you whether the discussions that you are having with your dealer is actually going in a positive way or in a negative way based on which the future actions might actually take place or let's say over a period of time whether the sentiment uh, that a dealer had towards you has increased or it went out on a downward slope depending on which you will also understand like whether the dealer was satisfied or not okay? this could be the weapon areas in which uh, machine learning could be used in the automotive sector i'm not saying this is an exhaustive list but yeah these are some of the most widely used areas okay the next thing that we have is uh, the workflow okay so when i speak about the workflow of machine learning so what happens there are a lot of things which goes into the background but these are some of the things which i could actually find it out so okay i, I forgot marking this so it should ideally be something like that business needs this is actually the first thing okay the first stage i would say something to mark with just hold on let me see if i have something that i can use as a marker okay i don't think anyways so uh, what i'm trying to say is business needs okay that that's the very first block that you can see that that forms the very first uh, say block in this particular life cycle of machine learning work okay so there is essentially a particular business need so some of you had mentioned how can I uh, say, how can I actually use machine learning or techniques related to that to overcome the things which I'm doing on a daily basis, which are actually very repetitive and which are actually very boring as well. So this could be a business thing, okay? How could I enhance my sales as a business? How could I uh, ensure that my inventory uh, is up to date and is on an optimum level business? Thing? Okay, how do I track which particular customer segment do I have to focus when I'm actually doing a new launch? This is, okay, these are all business needs, okay, which could actually convert to a technical solution, okay, once every, uh, say, every everything related to the business needs are actually uh, outlined clearly and the scope is also defined, okay. So what we have is something like, when we have a business, the very first thing that we would like to do is we like to, uh, so uh, once we have a business need defined and like, let's say, uh, translated into technical needs, we try to build some something which you call it as a minimum viable product, okay? So this is a minimum, when, when I say a minimum viable product, this is a kind of, uh, say, 
product which tells you what could be the capability that it could actually generate and how well it would respond to your business need. Okay, so it's a kind of demo product you can see. Okay, it's a kind of demo product or a service which could actually help you understand whether the business need that you have is able to, is, is being able to solve with that particular thing or not. So let's say if you have a particular issue which is which you are actually facing, let's say you want to optimize your inventory. So I build a minimum viable product, I test it out. I test it out using that minimum minimum viable product whether I'm able to optimize my inventory or not. If I'm able to do that, that means your minimum viable product is actually a succeed. Okay, so that's what we define by minimal viable product. It's a kind of demo product you can see, which is actually used to identify whether the business need is getting solved or not, but on a lower scale. Okay, in order to build that minimum viable product, we actually we what we do is the very first step is we try to get the relatable data from our database. So there has to be some kind of database which we are, which we are working on. In case we do not have that, we need to find or we need to create that particular data. Essentially, this thing is something which you guys should need to know. If you are planning to build any kind of algorithm, be it machine learning algorithm or AI-based algorithm, you need to have data. And you need to have the correct data, which is actually relatable to the business problem that you have. If you have uh, a business problem related to inventory, and if you're giving me sales data, that is not going to help. Okay, things like that. So uh, once you have your data, you'd be going for data preparation. Okay, so when I say data preparation, certain steps which you'll be actually using it on your raw data set to make sure that this data, data set is consumable or in a particular format ready to be consumed by the model which you which we are choosing to build on. Once it is model ready, we'll be choosing out of all the different algorithms that we have, we'll be choosing the best set of algorithms. We'll be running that algorithm. Once we run that algorithm, we get a particular accuracy with respect to that particular model. With respect to that accuracy, you'll also be getting certain outputs from that model. Okay, so let's say if we want to understand the, uh, if, we, if we want to optimize our inventory, we, we will definitely define what is the optimal level of inventory. And against that particular data, against sorry, against that particular model, the output of that model, we'll try to understand whether the output that our model is providing, what our optimal inventory was supposed to be defined with. So let's say our optimal inventory was, let's say, four units, and if our model is predicting three units, we can say that it is very close to it. So that's what we are defined by evaluating a particular model. And once we are satisfied with the output of the model, we can actually productionize this particular model. If we, and if we are not satisfied with the output of the model, we might have to change the modeling technique, and we might have to do that until and unless we are satisfied with the output of the model. Okay. Now, when I speak about model evaluation, there is two aspects of it. There is statistical evaluation, and there is business evaluation. Okay. These are statistical concepts which we are drawing it out, and there are high chances that the model could have a very high accuracy statistically, but from the business point of view, it may not satisfy fully. So both these things have to merge together before we move on to the next step, which is called productionizing the model. When you say we productionize the model, we create a service out of that model or kind of services out of that model. We deploy it in the production environment so that all the all, all, all the department in our company can actually access that model and the services provided by the model and actually can get the necessary output, okay? Once that model is productionized, we will be deploying that and we'll be making real-time predictions on that particular model, okay? Over a period of time, you'll see that uh, this initially, if, if you remember the data that we'll be getting initially, is something that we'll be getting in a particular frequency of time. It might happen that there are certain data, so there are certain data sources which might keep getting updated in a particular frequency, that's in a, in a period of, 15 days or 30 days. It could be a customer database. It could be any particular database. So as and when your data gets modified or appended, you, you have to read on your entire model. Okay, And these are some of the things which could be automated. Okay, So the moment you have your new data addition, your model runs. When, once your model runs, you'll be giving a particular accuracy 
okay you will have a benchmark accuracy and if that particular accuracy is crossing that benchmark accuracy it will be moving on to productionizing the model and deploying the model okay so this is what is actually being done in the block which you call it as monitoring predictions okay so this is in a particular manner the workflow of your entire machine learning uh, machine learning model and this is irrespective of the industry which you are actually working okay there could be changes here and there but overall the things or the concepts are giving us okay the next thing uh, that i have is a particular use case wherein a uh, automotive company had used analytics for launching a new product okay so the idea behind this exercise is I'm, I'm trying to show how you can use analytics even for a new product launch. Okay? This is in addition to the different uh, dimensions or different, uh, say, different different uh, different spheres in which I, you can actually use analytics. Okay. So uh, the thing is, like, there was a particular automotive company who was actually uh, careful, very carefully studying the customer behavior. They were trying to identify what is it that a particular customer is actually looking for when they are actually uh, like planning to buy a new car what are the features which they are looking for what is the existing feature which they don't have based on which they are selling their cars or what is that one particular feature in the existing car so a particular data set was built and when I say data set this was a data set which was roughly around 9 to 10 million of data that it had okay and this was primarily done uh, by creating surveys okay like preliminary data collection techniques, the building survey, building questionnaires, uh, and doing surveys, uh, capturing the responses, and converting that particular data set to a particular uh, structured format. Okay, so this was something which was done, and uh, they additionally try to understand the ex their existing customers' uh, intention as well. When I say intention, they try to understand which were those particular things for which their existing customers had to. Uh, get back to their service centers, okay? What are the different kinds of service requests that they were having, okay? Uh, what was the level of customer relationship that the dealer was maintaining, okay? So it was a kind of a 360 degree overview of their customers, which they tried to capture by capturing the uh, real-time experience with the car and by also capturing the dealer level relationship. Okay, so this was some kind of data which they managed to and this was a huge data they were actually hosting this data on a, on a particular platform on a, on a hadoop based platform okay and once they were able to do, do this particular thing they, they had their data like set up so they, they had this particular flow of data set up once they had the flow of data set up they tried to analyze this particular data they were using an analytical tool it's it's a, it was a python based tool okay so they were using this particular tool to analyze this particular database they are trying to understand uh, different references of the customer okay, they are doing the data mining techniques building insights from the data which were not uh, not, not not which were actually not uh, understandable or which was actually not uh, you, you were not able to comprehend that particular insights when you're looking at the data for the first time okay the data was essentially an excel based data so if you look at that excel data you may not be able to draw those insights which they were which they finally managed to draw with the help of visualization tool and with the help of analytical tools as well. And finally what they had done was they tried to do an unsupervised learning technique which in their particular case was clustering analysis. They performed the clustering analysis and they had a particular target group in mind. Okay. So before before they carried out the survey they were actually planning to launch a new product but they were not very sure which was that particular customer group which they need to target. So this particular exercise of working on the clustering technique helped them to understand the different cluster groups of people which they had in their database. And accordingly, they were very successful in targeting a particular segment of people with the help of which volume in that particular product, the new product which they had launched in the market was one of its kind in the sense that in that particular category in that particular price range there was no other com there was no other competitor spread it was basically a uh, amd car okay so basically automatic and manual transmission car which they had actually launched and using that they were actually able to 
have a 4% increase in their volume sales. They, they are still relying on this technique and the next target that they have in mind is around 12%. So they are trying to increase their volume sales from 4% to 12%. And this is a very new use case, like it is as old as say one or two years old, I would say. Okay, and this is something that is still working from this. Okay, so they had a new product launch. They performed analysis, they, they performed uh, algorithms to identify the target group. They did data mining, they, they, they had actually done data mining to understand insights from the data, okay, which mean, which they were not able to understand when they're looking at this uh, raw and structured data, okay, that was something which was not evident, okay. In, in case anyone of you might work on Tableau, you, you might be knowing that the moment you are actually taking, let's say, two or three variables and drawing out in your Tableau pane, you, you, you totally get a different a uh, different perspective of your data which you may not get when you're actually looking at it in an Excel file, okay? So these are definite advantage that we have, okay, for analytics. I had just tried to uh, poke some of these few things. There are a lot of things which in which analytics is used and this is one of the uh, things which is very much prevalent in Indian industry as well. Okay? Thanks for watching the video. For full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.